Some folks say it's the most beautiful place in America. I'd allow that. The Cherokee was here first, then the likes of us, mountain people. It's tough land, but they was folks to match. My granddaddy, my daddy. My daddy cleared this place. Taught me how to drag a living out of rough ground. <laughs> yes, sir. The nation's place. My land. That's my Annie. Come to visit me. Our boy Ezra lived but one day. That's our Mary, aged five. Sarah and Eulis nations, my Ma and Paul. And this here's mine. You there, Hector? I'm always here. I brought you some flowers. Oh. You rest yourself, old woman. What's troubling you? You worrying about Dillard again. Sometimes I wish I could keep my thoughts to myself. You think it, I know it. I had a letter from him yesterday. Made me uneasy. What did he say? Well, what he said, I don't know. He's doing good with his singing, I guess. I just wish he weren't so far away. Dream. I hate to think it's all over. I lost my heart, it seems. I've grown so used to you somehow. Lord, I'm nobody, sugar daddy. Now I'm lonesome. I got the looks in blue. That's right, I'm so lonesome. I got the looks in blue. Daddy, how long are you going to be gone? Two nights, two gigs. Well, you like staying with the Masons, don't you? I don't care. I'm going to play in Georgia. I'll see your grandma. I want to see grandma. Shh. you kill me. You go to sleep. Take her at cutouts. Cutouts? For a surprise. In thumbtacks so she can pin them up. Sure, honey. You promise? I promise. When Grandma wakes up in the morning, she'll see Susie and me on the wall. You go to sleep.
morning. You still fretting about that boy? He's playing a concert at Hiawatsee Saturday. Hiawatsee? That's 30 miles from here. You ain't going. Don't have to. He said he'd stop by. Trapes around the country with a guitar. What kind of work is that? Now, Hector. Well, his land it took care of him. Still, it makes a good living. <laughs> Remember this? That's when you had to know how to make a living. First thing I built, used to fill her up with corn, sorghum, cabbage, take the stuff to market, bring it right home again, feed it to the hogs. Old Hoover's time. Hadn't been for corn, liquor, and smart trading, we'd have had an empty table around here. Hot in this kitchen. I'm gonna work outside. Flies will kill you. Better flies than heat stroke. Who's that? I don't know. Company. I'm going back to my orchard. on you like this, Miss Nations. But as I remember, you don't have a phone. You been here before? Yes, ma'am. Had a nice talk with your husband some years back about the scout camp. I remember. Nice boys. All got poison ivy. <laughs> uh, my name's Carpenter. I'd like you to have my card. Uh, here you go. Prince Carpenter. I ain't got my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no need. Just says Mountain Peak Development Corporation, Greenville, South Carolina. All I want you to remember is Prince. You kidnapped Molly Carpenter. Well, could be. There's a whole heap of Carpenters over here my folks are kin to. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, please. My manners is rusty as an old hinge. <laughs> Man, I lie. You know, you feel ten years younger up here. Look at that view. Money in the bank. How many acres you got up here, ma'am? I don't know exactly. We never did step it off. Maybe a hundred. Hector could tell you. <laughs> Mr. Nations? That's right. You come to see my husband? No, ma'am. I come to see you. I got a proposition to make. Oh. What's that, <coughs> Mr. Carp? That's a pig. Ain't he a beauty? Now, if I can just get my knife down in there, maybe I can dig out that eye. What you gonna do with that thing when you get through? Make sauce meat. Boy, that's the best stuff I ever ate. I'm silly about South Meat. <laughs> I just can't get through there. My hand ain't as stout as it used to be. <laughs> uh. I'd be obliged if you give him one good cut right here so as I can get my fingers in. I'll hold it steady. Uh, uh here? Yeah, that'll be fine. Just open him up. Don't hit the eyeball if you can help it. That old black stuff squirt all over you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, you want I should do the other side? If you please. <laughs> I wish I had my strength so that I didn't have to bother you. Had two boys and Hector always done such as that. How many children you got, ma'am? Two boys and a girl. 
All the way, though. Got five little grands, too. You done it. Thank you. There we go. Oh, no, no, here, let me, let me. <laughs> Miss Nations, ain't Annie? I got a nice surprise for you. We want to buy your land. How much of it? All of it. House too? Everything. $200,000 cash on delivery of a free and clear title. Yeah, I don't think so, Mr. Carpenter. Prince, please, Prince. Lord, I'm plumb out of salt. Now that's vexing. I'll go get you some. No, no, don't you trouble. No trouble. My car's just down the hill. Wouldn't you like a ride? Well. You're a senior citizen, ain't Annie? If you don't sell, your kids will always do. We talk it over, I guess. Good. Me and my husband. Oh, yes, of course. Now, look over there on the right. That's the kind of work we do. Vacation homes, beautiful. You know Ruby Ridge? That's the old borough place where they cut the top off the mountain. You want to have a look around? I believe I won't, thank you. I'll wait for you, ain't Annie? Brad Carpenter, howdy. Mountain Peak Development. Howdy. I believe we met down at Betty Creek Road last year with your cousin Jake. He just dropped the work on the open with your ring. I guess he wasn't getting like a You all bring me those workbooks to class on Monday. Finished? And I'll buy you a soda. Okay, Tommy? Make it a beer. Get out of here. Thanks for riding, Miss Pearl. Thanks for all your time. Listen, you are going to get the best SAT scores in Georgia. We'll show them what Raven County kids can do. I'll see you Monday. Bye. How's your mother, Becky? Better. She's back in the store. Well, come say hi. Here it is, Aunt Annie. One bag enough? Lord, yes. And a pound of coffee, Madge, I guess. I'll get it, Mom. Well, hi, Mrs. Burton. How you feeling? Fine, thanks. Why, Aunt Annie? Holly! Well, this is the big day. I was coming up to make sure you had a ride tonight. Tonight? Ta-da! Dillard's concert. That ain't Dillard. Well, that's how he looks on his record. But he said the 30th. Today's the 30th, ain't Annie? Today's Saturday? Sure is. Oh, my. I've got to get back home right now. Well, well I'll drive you. Well, there's a fella outside that brung me down. Not Prince Carpenter. That's him. I'll drive you. Oh, I'd like that. I'll just thank him. Where's Ma? She's inside. She all right? She's fine. Just washing up. You look great. Is Cheryl with you? No. How are the kids? Got their mother's looks and their daddy's talent. Well, they'll go far. Sure it's good to see you again. Hey, would you do something for me? I'll try. It ain't hard. Just tell me who you are. <laughs> you don't remember. I guess not. Right in there. I was still in high school. I had a big crush on you. You were home visiting. Your pa was just out of the hospital, and... Lord, I asked him if he ever shot anyone. I'll be damned. You're that kid with the tape recorder. Holly. Holly Burrell. You still live here? Sure. Well, I went away to college. I taught in Atlanta for a while, and now I'm back in high school. Why'd you come back? Just look at it. And they're the kids. I love them. Once in a while, you can make a difference. Is that him? Hello, Ma. <laughs> I wake 
weren't expecting you. <laughs> well, didn't you get my letter? I got mixed up. You playing tonight? Yes, ma'am. But you can stay over. Well, afraid not, Ma. I got to get back to the kids. I, I told you it'd have to be a real short visit this time. Well, I ain't going to cry about it. I got you now. <laughs> I brung you some oranges. They are real pretty. I'm taking her to the concert. Oh, I dearly love that, Holly. I dearly would, but it's a fur piece for old bones like me. And I don't believe Hector go. Yeah, that kettle's boiling. You want a cup of tea? Hector. Yeah, been dead five years. She still has his clothes hanging in there. Has tools under the bed. I moved them once. She put them right back. When Pa was alive, she used to wash and get into her nightgown behind a curtain in the corner. The curtain's still there. It doesn't matter, you know. It ain't good. There's nothing wrong with her. In the head, you mean? Hell no. She's clearer than I am. Cup of tea? Not for me, Annie. Eh? I gotta be getting along. You can't stay, child. Well, I'll be up again real soon. Next weekend. You do that and stay overnight. You can have Dillard's bed. I gotta warn you. I snore. That was a joke, Ma. You tease that way with Cheryl? No, ma'am. I don't tease with Cheryl. Well, good luck tonight, Dillard. Sure you won't change your mind. Come on, Ma. You ain't seen me on stage since I won that medal. He were only 17. He won a prize at the state fair. I'm better now. I'll sing something special for you. Well, what did I wear? Just put on your hat. Please come, hey, Nanny. I'll bring you straight home. Well, I guess it'd be all right just this once. That's more like it. I'll pick you up at seven. <laughs> Bye, Naya. I'll see you later. I'm fond of that one. <laughs> so, how are the kids? Hello, Ma. I'm real glad to come. That coat's gone at the elbow. Get to you. <laughs> Ain't all that's gone. His kids is fine. Heck, he's learning guitar. Damn, they sent you a present. I left it in the car. You mind me to get it. What do you mean, that ain't all that's gone? Nothing. Just talk. Time passing. And now Cheryl? Cheryl's fine. Doing good at work. Real busy. She trots around here as much as you do. You're still traveling a lot. We're working a club in Orlando this spring. I want to be closer to the kids for a while. Well, I'm glad of that. You look good. Certainly declare I do. I got my health, thank the Lord. How about quitting while you're ahead? Quitting? <laughs> come to Florida. You don't have to sell the house. Just come where I can keep an eye on you. Dillard, honey, don't start that again. It'd mean a lot to the kids. I belong here. Well, come for the winter, then. Who'd feed the chickens? Ma, you can buy eggs. It's Pa, ain't it? Now, I ain't gonna say no prayers. I just want you to listen to me. You ain't so young no more. You're up here all on your own, no one around. Supposing you had an accident. You let Pa rest and come live with us. I ain't seen you look so serious since you used to talk about your music. I ain't talking about music now. Now, you listen to me. You're talking about your Pa resting. And he is, right here, up in the old orchard with his ma and pa and your little brother and sister. And when my time comes, I'm gonna lay right down there beside him, and nothing's going to change that. 
Not you, no Florida, no nothing. Your elbow's digging into my knee, son. You're gonna have to move. Well, I'd sure sleep a lot better if news off this mountain. Maybe you would. But I ain't stepped in another bed since I was married, and I ain't about to. And I ain't giving up on it, Ma. I swear I'm gonna keep after you. Say, what happened to the smokehouse? Roof give up. Well, you want I should fix it? It's spent its days, I reckon. <laughs> Your pa put that up first year we was married. Now, that's 60 years ago. 60 years. <laughs> you was 18? What were you like, Ma? <laughs> Scared. <laughs> I was only 16 when he asked me to marry him. He was scared, too. It was at a corn shucking. You remember corn shuckings? Sure. That great pile of corn on the ground and the fiddles are playing. They buried a jug of liquor in the corn. The men had moved for that. <laughs> and the first one to find a red ear got to kiss the prettiest gal. That's right. And it were your pa. Sometimes stay with you just so clear, like they were still happening. I remember we was all over at the Norton's big barn. The music was a playing and everyone was a dancing. Ain't you gonna dance? I gotta tell you something. I ought to go back. No, 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 wait. They'll notice. Let them. Loose me, please, Hector. Sorry. I didn't mean to grab at you. Well, what is it then? That red ear. Tell you the truth, I didn't find it. I only made out I did. I know that. You did? I seen you take it out of your pocket. Oh. Annie, I'm working pretty regular. When I can get it. And I'll have my daddy's home place someday. It's good land. I aim to settle down. You should, Hector. That's right. Raise a family. It ain't men raises families. Well, that's just it. You're awful, Purdy. <laughs> I'm still to school, Hector. And I gotta go back now. I can wait. You got my arm again. I know. I guess it's not inferred. Annie. We 
will you? Well? I'm scared, Hector. What of? You? Me? Oh, I like you, but... But what? You're too... too hasty. Well, I can change. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. How long did you make him wait? Two years. And he changed? No. But he waited. <laughs> Smart man. Lucky man. Uh, I gotta watch the clock. This thing's slow. <laughs> what in the world are you gonna do with all them oranges? It must have been crazy. We should have given some to Holly. It put him in the cellar for me. It, it, give me a couple first. You want one? Ma, if I never see another orange in my life, it'll be too soon. They're a real treat to me. So who busts this door? It got stuck. We had a long wet spell last month. Door swole up, I guess. <laughs> Went to get beans for my supper, couldn't open it. <laughs> Felt right foolish. <laughs> Looks like you had a tough job getting in. I was already in. <laughs> How do you mean? Inside. Door shut behind me. <laughs> well, how'd you get out? Joe Norton come up next morning to cut wood for me. Heard me holler it. Yeah, I'll put this inside and look to the time for you. Wait a minute. You was in there all night? Oh, went so bad. Dark, never hurt no one. You could have got pneumonia. No, I had to pass sweater on. Slept some. Well, what if Joe hadn't come? Yes, I'd still be hollering. Damn it, Ma. That's just what I've been talking about. You could have died in there and nobody'd know. Uh, folks come visiting all the time. Yeah, once a week, once a month. You're the third person to come up this hill today. Well, how many times that happened? You could break your neck up here and nobody'd know. All because of Pa. Hi. Hi. Ms. Nation's around? She's in the house. <laughs> Geez, that hill sure tells you if you're in shape. <laughs> you live around here? Nope. Bring them with you? Yep. Florida, huh? That's right. You boys really moving in down here, ain't you? You interested in this place? Yeah, I'm interested. Well, meet the competition. I'm Mountain Peak Development, Brent Carpenter. Pleased to meet you. I've had my eye on this place for a long time. It's no sale, though. You ever talk to the old man? Yeah, I talked to him. How'd you do? I haven't spoken to him in quite a while. Won't budge. No way in this world to reach him. I ain't never gonna sell. He tell you that? Right here on this porch. Now, how'd you manage that? <laughs> uh, weren't easy. <laughs> I guess not. My pa's been dead five years. Come again? My pa, he died. You're absolutely right. Five years ago. You must be the son in show business, Dillard. I sure ain't in real estate. Oh, of course not. Got a mite ahead of myself there. Smart man, you, Paul. I talked to him just before he passed over. You did, huh? Absolutely. Your ma remembers. Offered him 100000 for this place, and he wouldn't touch it. He knew values would go up. And you think that's the only reason he wouldn't sell? Offered your ma 200 You ain't gonna budge ma neither. I sure can't. Look, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, call me Prince. My granddaddy cleared this land. My pa worked it. I worked it. 
My ma lives here. It must get mighty lonely up here. I guess that's why she brought back your pa, huh? You knew about that? Hell, yeah, Dullard, this is my territory. You didn't call her on it. What do you take me for? I wasn't about to spoil anything for a fine old lady. Think it over, Dillard. You're wasting your breath. It ain't my land. And it ain't my life. It's your mother. Face it, Dillard. Everything has changed since you and me grew up in these mountains. All the kids with any get up and go have got up and went, just like you did. The old ones are just hanging on like foxfire on rotten wood. Mr. Carpenter? Friend, please, friend. Ain't any. I brought you a present. Be careful. It's sharp. And I know you need a sharp knife. Oh. <laughs> no, I won't hear a word. You just take it slow and gentle. Next time you have to cut out an hour or two. Now, I can't let you. Only, you're gonna have to give me a penny, ain't any? My old granny used to say to me, you can't never give a body nothing with a sharp edge or it'll cut the friendship. Let them pay you a penny for it to keep you as a friend. Tell it. You got a penny? I'm all out. There. And there's some Band-Aids in the bag, just in case. Well, thank you kindly. Mr. Carpenter was just leaving. Yeah. Got to be getting along. But I'll be back. Time's a marching. Bye, ma'am. Dillard. Ma, why didn't you tell me that fella been poking around? Wouldn't have changed nothing. He told me he talked to Pa. He did? Well, maybe he did. Now, that ain't a good kind of man to be doing business with, Ma. What do he say to you? Call me a senior citizen. Said if we didn't sell, you would. Well, what the hell's he mean? It's your land. Don't swear, son. He went so far off. It'll be coming to you one day anyway. What about Millie and, and Jed? You know, they ain't never coming back. I'd give it to you now if I thought you could use it. Oh, hell, Ma, don't lay that on me. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to swear. I do love this place, but I can't live here. No, you never could once you was growed. <sighs> Things don't work out, do they, Ma? What's troubling you, Dillard? Nothing, just living. I best get started. If I'm not there to set up, they'll be fussing. Well, maybe you'd better then. If that real estate man comes around again, don't you talk to him. I'll talk to your pa about it. Of course you will. Now you be sure and give the kids my love. I won't forget. And I'll give yours to your pa. Oh, never mind that. Now you just go on. Well, you ain't mad at me, are you? Dylan, honey, I ain't mad to soul in this world. You kiss me good when you come, and I just hate goodbyes. You can kiss me when you come back again. Okay. I won't try to see you after the show. I, I gotta get back to Atlanta and catch that plane. I hope you like it. I'll clap real loud. <laughs> I'm sorry it's so short. I I'll write when I get back. Now, don't you go close no doors on yourself. He sent you his love. I hear it. Something's wrong, Hector. He honored you to go live with him again? That's it, Ed. Come to Florida. Well, I ain't going. He ain't asked you. You gonna leave me? 
You're way too old for that now. Well, I'm too old for our decide. Dillard's going through rough quarters. Well, we went through them too. Times is different. They ain't harder. Like the Bible says, man is born into trouble. Not just to pick on a banjo. Hector, honey, the Lord forgive me, but sometimes I get a little tired of what the Bible says. And it ain't a banjo, it's a guitar. And I'm gonna go see him play it tonight. you folks come down here tonight, it's good to be home. My pa, my pa's born just a cat's jump from here. He's a good old boy from down on the farm. He could sing. Of course, it didn't sound no better than a crow. But I guess that's what got me started. That and an old banjo my pa picked up trading. Oh, my pa was a trading man. One step ahead of the sheriff. He'd swap you silly. <laughs> yeah, you'd be lucky to walk away wearing a shirt. <laughs> I wrote a song about my pa and his trading. Me and the boys would like to sing it for you. It's called Sweet Talker. <laughs> in his yard when he got the family place well he sweated twice as hard he was a sweet talker Paul was a trading man he was a sweet talker best count your fingers if he shakes his hand sweet talker what you gotta swap what you gotta trade got a pig and a calf and a cook just made got syrup and potatoes and no need to bicker how's about a jug of my genuine corn liquor
can swap a bit mail for a blue eyed mule. Thank you, folks. Man, it sure is nice to be back here in good old Rabin County. I tell you, these mountains, they just don't never let you go. <laughs> Guess I'm just an old hillbilly boy at heart. Oh, Got my ma out there with you folks tonight. She's sitting with a pretty little gal named Holly Burrow. Holly's a school teacher, but she don't look it. <laughs> we was visiting this afternoon, and uh, they asked me if I'd sing a song from my album, and I'd kind of like to do that, you don't mind. Uh, I understand if you like it, there's got a few of them for sale down there someplace. Anyway, this is the title song, another Dillard Nations original. It's called My Feet Took to Walking. <laughs> Sure, I remember the home place. Sure, I remember it clear. Because the day that I left her was just this time of year. I can see her smile almost every mile. But my feet. and talking about all the dreams that never were till the feet took to walk in a way What are you to take me, Holly? Well, it's my pleasure, Aunt Annie. They sure did clap, anyway. <laughs> All that hooping and hollering. They loved it. I do believe I got a headache. <laughs> I ain't had one of them in years. You got some aspirin? No. I'll just have a cup of tea and get to bed. You just sit while I put the kettle on. Oh, thank you, child. You've had a long day. I wish you didn't have to go up in one of them planes. Better than driving all night. Hector never did hold with flying. Said it was again nature. The Lord meant us to fly, to give us wings. Never give us wheels, neither. You've been gone four hours. I know. First time in five years. You forgot to feed the chickens. Oh. And you ain't had no supper. I ate a hot dog. <laughs> and popcorn. Holly bought it. Young'uns today got more money than sense. You bought me ice cream when we was courting. Only a nickel, then. I wish you'd been there. Just be a minute. Had to light the stove. Oh. What do you expect? You leave, fire goes out. Ma! Ma! Well, how'd you like it? I thought you was flying straight back. I changed my mind. Catch a plane tomorrow. What'd you think? It was real nice. Yeah, give you a headache. That fiddler were good, minding me old times. What songs did you like best? Oh, they was all good. You work so hard. I could see the sweat running down you. It gets hot. I'll wash that shirt. Tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's best. I ain't had such a big day in years. I'll just draw me a bucket of water for the morning. I'm doing that. Oh, thank you, child. 
Your bed's made out. Your pa would have been proud of you, boy. Now, I'm gonna have my tea. She's worn out. What'd she really think? Oh, she was excited. Well, what'd she think? She thought it was loud. <laughs> it was, too. <laughs> it's gotta be loud. They don't figure they got their money's worth unless you bust some eardrums. What else? Well, lie out and uh, jokey. Dill it, I'm no critic. Well, what didn't you like? Well, I'll tell you. Usins down here in good old Raven County ain't all hillbillies. I am. Up there, I am. That's just what they want, and I do what I have to for my customers. Do you have to dress up like a stop sign? It's all part of the image. It's not you. Now, what do you know about me? I know we both come from the same place, and we don't talk like little Abner. Turning your daddy into a joke. How could you? You're a singer. You sounded like a salesman. I'm sweet-talking, honey, just like my pa. He used to say you make a nickel any way you can. He made it by plain hard work. I remember your daddy. He won all sweet talk. I'm sorry for sounding off about your concert. I just like the way you used to sing. Just your voice and the guitar. It's beautiful. Wouldn't pay the rent. Give me a hand. What's that? Peggy and Susie. Present for the grandma. It's supposed to be the first thing she sees when she wakes up. They'd have killed me if I forgot. Well, you should have brought the kids with you. And Cheryl, too. You don't know Cheryl. What's she like? Fastest credit card in the South. What's that mean? Nothing. Cheryl's a city gal. She likes things easy. Ma could use some of that. Wish I could get her to come to Florida. To live? You know a fellow named Prince Carpenter? We've met. Why? He was up here today. Made an offer for the place. Don't you listen to him. Him and his Ruby Ridge. You know that development? Sure. I was born over there. Four generations, we farmed that land. Then Ma died. Prince Carpenter talked my daddy into selling out. They built fancy homes for summer people all over our mountain. Bobbed wire to keep the hillbillies out. Those kids I teach, I want them smart enough to keep their own land, because once it's gone, you can never get it back. Don't let any sell, Dillard. Don't let Prince shove her out. Ma, don't shove easy. She knows what she wants. Always did. So did Pa. <laughs> Two people and a piece of ground. That's all it took. And don't let us sell the piece of ground. It ain't that simple. No. I suppose it could help you a lot. You and Cheryl. What's that supposed to mean? Two kids to take care of. Her working, you traveling all the time. If I wanted someone to take care of my kids, it wouldn't be a 79-year-old woman doesn't know how to drive, never been in a supermarket or a bus. The thing is, there'd be someone to look after her. She'd be safe. Safe from what? This is her home, Dillard. 
You've forgotten how it feels. No, I ain't. She's lived here all her life. And this isn't such a bad place to die. All alone up here? She's got good friends. More than she'd have in Florida. The Nortons, me, lots of people. And she has your pa. Come off it, Holly. He ain't real. Well, so what? Maybe he means more to her than indoor plumbing. Ma's alive. And so's her family. I just mean, don't push too hard, Dillard. I know you love her. But is leaving here what she wants? Or you won't? Now, that's my business, ain't it? Yes, it is. It's your business. Good night, Dillard. And I still like the way you used to sing. This time of year, I can see her smile almost every mile. But my feet took to walking, my feet took to walking. No sense in talking it out All the dreams that never were Gimpy leg? Of course not. They are beautiful. It's her birthday next week. Who's? Susie's, Dillard's youngest. Oh, well, birthdays don't mean so much to me no more. No, never did. <laughs> Morning, Ma. I'm so proud of these. <laughs> it's all their own idea. You mind me, I've got a little birthday something for Susie I want you to carry. She'd be tickled. <laughs> nice smell. 
just coffee. Not the coffee. This place. Huh? Why'd you come back? Why'd I come home? You told me I had to get back to the children. I do. I needed to talk to you. Did you call Cheryl? Not yet. Won't she worry? No. I would. She ain't there, Ma. Where's she at? She's away. Where's Hecky and Susie? Staying with friends. That side door needs fixing. Is he there? I'm here. Sometimes. Can you touch him? Oh, your pa went much for touching. Well, you had five kids, for God's sake. That's right. For the Lord's sake. And for mine and your pa's, and for this place. Did you always love him? We was married. No, not always. I guess sometimes I near hated him. Well, I'm gonna have to hear this. But you stuck with him. All that time, no matter what. <laughs> Paul was smart to wait his two years. You gonna tell me about Cheryl? What's to tell? I don't know. But something. She's gone, Ma. Gone? Took off, left, two weeks ago. Why? Lots of reasons. You strike her? No, ma'am. Maybe I should have. Another man? Yep. She take the children? They didn't have room in the trunk. She wants a divorce. She got herself a lawyer. Well. What are you going to do about that? Well, I ain't going to let her have my kids. Her kids, too. She quit. I didn't. How are you going to care for two young'uns you traveling all the time? I'll work something out. They're all I got, and damn it, I'm their pa. Yeah, you're their pa. But you got no wife and no real home. I'm way ahead of you, Ma. I can't come back here. You want I should go there? No. Well, yes. Of course I do. I've been trying for years, but not to bail me out. No way. I want you to be safe. I'm scared of that phone call tells me to come carry you out of here feet first. It ain't me, it's you. You can't make it alone. And Pa's dead. Now, damn it, how do I get through to you on that? He's dead, Ma. Dillard, honey, don't you never hear him in your head? All the time. Telling me things I don't want to hear. I remember them things. First it was your brother, then your sister. Then you was the only one left. He never meant no harm. He just saw everything his own way. Like you bumping heads with him when you were 16. You done like I told you? What's that? Check the planting calendar. Not yet. A fool despises his father's instruction. Proverbs 15. Set that to music. I 
ain't heard that before. It's called resurrection. You make it up? Nah, Mr. Wilson. He's good. Only three eggs. I don't know what ails them chickens. They got eggs at the store. You know, we don't spend money that way. Well, if they ain't good one road, they're good another. <laughs> I'll buy them for you, the eggs. You will. For a present. <laughs> Ma, I made five dollars. How did you do that? Playing at the dance. <gasps> don't you tell your pa. Well, I, I won't. Well, that's real sweet of you, honey. Wanting to buy us a present. It's for you, not him. Dillard, honey, you'll be good now. Your pa's wore out with only one pair of hands around here. You still at school and all. I'm painting the barn tomorrow. Give it here. There's a glass or something. On your chores? Yep. What? Yes, Pa. Sir. Don't mumble. All of them? I chopped the wood, filled the buckets, watered the stock, mucked out the stall, cleaned the trough, and collected the eggs. There's only three. Hardly worth the feed. to get them taters in this weekend. I thought you wanted me to paint the barn. Not tomorrow. It's going to be fine. We got all week to plant taters. No, we ain't. It's a new moon Wednesday. Well, we should have planted them today. Signs was in the feet today. Oh, Paul, what's the difference? Dillard. Well, it's old timey talk, Ma. And what's wrong with that? Nothing, I guess. You get it straight about taters now. You always plant them in the last quarter. You plant them in the light of the moon, you get all vine, no tater. You know, any fool knows that. Yes, Pa. People's been going by the signs for a long time, boy. I know. We don't never kill a hog on the new of the moon, now you know that. If cracklings will come out all soft and puffy if you do. Well, I can see people believing in the moon. I mean, it moves the ocean, makes the tides, like Mr. Wilson says. But he says there ain't no scientific proofs for planting by the signs. Wilson, that the fella with a beard and glasses? Yes, sir. He plays guitar, too, real good. What's he know about farming? Well, he's only the county agent, that's all. Teaches a course for the 10th grade, and he says there ain't no scientific proof for planting by the signs. Oh, he does, does he? Can he stand an egg on its end? What? Yeah. Stand this on its end. Well, you can't. Go ahead, boy. No one can. You mean your Mr. Wilson says there ain't no scientific proof? Now, what do you call that? A spoiled egg. You cheated. I used the sense that God gave me. Right in Genesis, it says, let them be light in the firmament to divide night from day and let them be for signs. Now, that's what the Lord said. He didn't say for you to waste my eggs. No, I'm trying to teach him something. Mr. Wilson's been farming for 20 years without using the signs, and Mr. Wilson's yields as high as anyone in this county. You know, I'm getting a mite tired of that feller's name. He plants by the weather and the seasons. And I plant by what controls the weather and the seasons. Oh, Pa. Don't you owe Pa me? Now you get that no all out of your voice, boy. Well, you can't prove it, Pa. Don't tell me I ain't proved it. Now you listen to me, boy. You've been getting way above yourself lately. Always making out like we don't know nothing. Well, we know a damn sight more than some of these big talking friends of yours. There's no need to cuss in front of the boy. Ain't no need for you and me to spat in front of him, neither. But this is my house, and if I have to cuss to get through room, I'll cuss. I've been working this land 35 years, and my daddy 30 years before that. 
You learn it by doing it. You know, you want to study farming, you keep your eyes open right here. Seems like every time I turn around, you're picking at that thing. That ain't no fit occupation for a man. I made five dollars picking at this thing. How'd you do that? Hector, you ought to look to beauty before dark. What? The mayor, her knee's bad. How'd you make five dollars? She can't hardly stand up. How'd you make it? Playing at the dance. Saturday night? Yes, sir. You told me you was going coon hunting. Yes, sir. You told me you never even seen a coon. That was true, Paul. I wish you'd look to beauty. Beauty can wait. You told me a bare-faced lie. Yes, sir. Bare face lie. Now, what are we going to do about that? I don't know, Pa. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You take this round of that willer by the spring house, and you cut me a limb about three feet long, the size of your finger. Now, you know better than that. I don't do it. He pays for it. He's only a boy. That's just it. I ain't gonna have him run around with men that's ten years older, drinking, cousin, chasing girls. You done all them things? When? When I first know you. Oh, I was growed, for God's sake. You still cuss and drink some. Well, I expect him to do a damn sight better than I done. He knows the rules. You... You always been too soft on him. Like I was on Jed. Oh, Jed. Jed was just plain mule-minded. They're both your sons. And we ain't seen hide nor hair of one of them in eight years. Which finger did you use? You didn't say my thumb. Come on out back. We ain't gonna shame you in front of your maw. Dillard, talk to him. Don't go on about music. Here, take him his platen calendar. Come on, boy. Let's get this over with. Done. As the twig is bent, so will the tree grow. You just broke it. What? Nothing. I'll go look to that mare. You don't have to. You said her leg was bad. I lied. You're gonna whoop me, too? I'll go look to her anyway. I'm right sorry for you, Hector. Felt sorry for you, too. You didn't hurt me. 
I had that old plantin' calendar stuck down my britches. Maybe it did hurt. Been so long ago now, I can't remember nothing except how mad I was. I hated him. And I loved him. Remember when Jed quit? I thought he was gonna kill Pa. Last I heard, he was working for an oil company in Alaska. Is this still right? Oh, Millie writes now and then. All three of us quit, but you're still hanging on. And you won't let go of him, will you? I'll get you some breakfast. I, I can't, Ma. I, I gotta get to Atlanta by one. I'll, I'll bring the kids up for your birthday. If you can. Oh, I ain't gonna let you spend that time alone. Oh, I ain't never alone. I feel I got the Lord looking out for me all the time. You don't have that, do you? I guess we failed you there. And you got Pa. Well, I ain't about to put him on the same rung as the Almighty. But I wouldn't be without him. Susie's present. That's great. Thanks, Ma. How are you going to make out with them two young'uns? Kids like eating out. Don't sound right. Willy or won't he? Can he or can't he? Should you or shouldn't you? Round and round. It's his life. You can't change a thing. No need to worry it today. I always wanted a family. Well, you got one. I'm weary of seeing my children march down that hill. First Jed, then Millie. Now him. You ride every week now. You let me know if you need me. Who'd feed the chickens? Don't fret. We'll make out. You give them my love. Go on now. He'll be back. No, he's got the family now. Well, you got this place. Place or family? Is that the choice? Maybe we was lucky. No choices. You married, you stayed married. <laughs> I'm still here. No, Hector. You're up in the old orchard. Was you brung me down? You want to change that? Please, Hector, things change whether we want them to or not. Five years. Susie worked no more than a little bit when you died. Dillard's changed, too. You've never seen that, neither. He's studying divorce, ain't he? Now, what's that? You take the table, I'll take the chair. <laughs> what about the kids? You take an arm, I'll take a leg. He's just coon hunting again. Whatever he's doing, there's two young uns to be cared for. They're growing someplace else. You and me was planted here. To everything there is a season. Time to be born, time to die. Time to plant, and a time to pick up that which is planted. I thought you was no hand at quoting the Bible. Go away, please, Hector. I've got to figure this out for my own self. It's all easy for you now. Well, there's nothing like daylight between the ribs to clear a man's mind. You ain't still here. It's the kids that's still here. You went away five years ago. You got so sick. You left me. I watched you go. Just out of the hospital, Mr. Nations. Are you feeling better now? Who are you? I told you, Hector. It's Holly Burrow. 
She's writing about us in her school magazine. About the old days. No. How'd you like being over there in Highlands? I didn't. Just can't stand the towns. No room. Could you speak up a little, sir? I said I don't like a town. That's fine. You think you'll retire now? How's that? Do you still work the place? More like... Pa don't hear too good when he don't want to. What did he say? Said you ought to take it easy. You've been poorly. So, I've been poorly. Well, I don't aim to slack off none. When the Lord made him, man, he, he made him good. He made him tough. And uh, this old body's really put together, buddy. You can't hardly tear it apart so well put together. And I'm going to live just as long as I see anybody else living. Nah. There ain't nobody need say nothing about that. What you knitting, Ma? Socks. I'm bound to have something in my fingers to occupy my mind. <laughs> got socks here and do a centipede. How many children have you got, Mrs. Nations? You call me Aunt Annie Child. Everyone else does. I had five. Let's see. No, I asked you that. Oh, my teacher wanted this one. Is it a problem here? Kids going off and families selling out? Yeah. What are you going to do when you quit school? I'm going to be a teacher. Here? I like it here. Don't you? Now, you stick to that. It's where you belong. What you value. I guess this place is more important to you than anything else in the world, isn't it? What is? This place. Mm. I didn't say that. Didn't you say this is what you value most? No. Well, what is? She is. Who? Her. <laughs> what did I do? Well, it's all right, Pa. Is that what most folks say? Most folks say they won't budge no matter what. But my granny, she wants a trailer with a TV. TV. When did you ever look at TV, Pa? Oh, I seen it. I don't like it. The biggest piece of sin furniture man ever made. It's all sex and guns. I, I bet you half those fellas never handled a gun in their life. Did you? Oh, I grew up with them. I wasn't more than about five years old when my daddy first put a rifle in my hand. I didn't mean hunting, exactly. What'd you mean? Did you ever shoot anyone? Well, if I did, I ain't gonna tell you about it. You all right, Ma? Fine. I just needed another bowl of wool. My daddy said a revenue got shot right over in the next hollow. Time for my pill. Oh, I'll get it. You set. I can do it. I guess there ain't no place in the world where there ain't some violence. What happened when somebody got hurt, Mrs. Knight? Ain't any. You just did the best you could and trusted in the Lord. I was raised on that. The Lord is with you in time of trouble or in sickness or in pain. All you got to do is ask. He can heal everything. Didn't you ever go to a doctor? Suppose you broke a leg or got a toothache. Well, if you got your leg broke back in the old days, they'd place it back the best they could with split wood pieces. And then they'd take and tie it with good, stout string. And then they get set for about uh, 12 months. 12 months? And if you had to have a tooth pulled. Okay. You come to a fellow by the name of Jay... Garrett. Garrett. He'd say, lay down on the floor, boy. And you'd stretch out. He'd put one knee on your chest and catch you around your head. 
Oh, he is stout, too. And he'd put one of those homemade pullers in there, and he'd give her a yank, and he'd bring that, too, <laughs> if he didn't bust it. <laughs> but you wouldn't go to Mr. Garrett now, would you? Now, you just love to hear me say, yes, I would, wouldn't you? That all the old ways was better than what we got now. Well, nobody but a damn fool is going to say that. But some of the ways is better. You had time. Nowadays, if you can't get to Atlanta and back in one day, ooh, you're way behind. You had neighbors then. Real neighbors. You had the land, and you had your family. I reckon that'll do us till they sound the bell. Yeah. The bell? St. John's. Though they don't do it no more unless you ask special. They go ring the bell as soon as they could. Toll it. You'd get to count, and if you heard the bell toll, you'd figure out who it could be. If it was a child two years old, it'd be two, or ten, or twenty, or whatever. That's right. For the old ones, it'd toll for half an hour. It was slowed, you see. Dong. Dong. Sounds sad. Nothing sad about her. St. Paul said, be not sorry for those who are departed. Folks are coming to help you out, to pay their respect. Help you dig the grave and make the coffin. You'd have a drink and then talk. You'd... Sing a little. I like the songs that was hopeful. There was one Dillard used to sing. I can hear it in my head, but I ain't clear on the words. And my voice ain't much, neither. <laughs> now the stars is resting, setting, setting on, on the hill. hill. Nothing is the sound. Oh, that's right, that's right. Down in our hollow, there the fox fire glow. Dear Lord, give all your creatures their repose. The day is done, dear Lord. Tomorrow's sun, dear Lord. You should come, you should sure come. We have your word, dear Lord. This is something I never did learn. When did Paul ever wear a tie? At our wedding. And when his pa died. This same one. You want us to tie it? No. Thank you, Dillard, but I kind of like to do for myself, if you don't mind. Oh. 
I hate to put the coins on his eyes, though. Seems like the very last thing I can do. I had two quarters here, but one slipped away. Ma, when are you going to get something to eat? Oh, I'll settle with something later on with the others. Where are they all gone? Grady's doing the milking. Told me I weren't no hand at it. <laughs> Just like Pa. Now, Dillard. Now, that was nothing, Ma. Him and me was over that long ago. Gudgeard and some of the others went to get lumber for the box, and I shooed Millie's kids all down to the creek. But it's so quiet all of a sudden, this... I'm just holding my breath. It's the bell, Ma. It's quit. Why, so it has. Seventy-seven. And it didn't take long. So still, it makes me tired. Sit down, then. You know, Dillard, he was bragging to the doctor on your medal. Paul was? Don't that beat all. It was only second place. But with guitar players from all over Georgia. No, Dillard, don't. Don't you comfort me none. He didn't like tears. I could get him to do anything for me if I cried, so I never did. Not even when your sister Mary died. He did, though. I called him right out there by the shed. His face all wet. He was mean to me all day long after that. And then that evening, he comes in with a bunch of dewberries. He just shoved them at me across the table. Turned his back, changed his shirt, sat down to supper. Never said a word. It must be back. I know I had two of them. You've got a quarter. You know what troubles me? When I washed him just now, I found a big white scar above his knee, his right knee. And I can't remember what made that. Not for the life of me, I can't. And I don't want to forget nothing. He must have been hurt bad. This old body's really put together, buddy. Can't hardly tear it apart. I'll be right near if you need me. Hector, you remember when Mary died? You did it for her because I wasn't up to it. Well. I'm doing it now. Dillard Nations, second guitar, 1968. Hector. It's his medal. You hear me now? It's his medal. Oh, Lord. I never could stand goodbyes. There. That's done. 
It's his metal, Hector. But it's my hand. Every shadow shrinking, shrinking to the west. The breeze comes so sweetly across the fresh mown hay. Dear Lord, be with us through a newborn day. Taking those with you? I certainly am. They made them for me. I ain't about to leave them behind. You sure my rocker's coming? Ma, you can't take everything on that plane. Now they'll pick that stuff up on Tuesday. Rocker's top of the list. How high up do them planes go? I'll take care of you. You're <laughs> Made up your mind. Old woman. Old woman, I'm talking to you. You don't hear me, do you? You better get started, Ma. I'm all ready. You haven't forgotten anything. Oh, the glasses. Mm. All set. Guess so. Moon will be up tonight. Almost full. All vine and no tater. What? Nothing. Going to be some fine homes up here. Always was. Absolutely. No offense. You find them, Ma? Anything else I forgot, I can do without. <laughs> we can always come back anyway. Oh, I'm coming back. You sure he's got that in the paper? You don't have to worry about that. Private burial grounds protected by law. We can't touch it. Huh. You got a hammer somewhere in, Annie? Under the bed. Put it back. Nope. You taking your pa's tools? <laughs> I don't aim to be a carpenter, but as him taught me how to use them, I figured I'd like to be reminded. You best lend me your arm down the hill. You want to take a look around? Honey, there ain't a rock or a tree or a blade of grass here I don't know better than my own hand. So let's just get along. I don't have to wave.
so. Trespassers will be prosecuted. <laughs> Trespassers. I guess that's me. Well, we got a big job of digging to do to get rid of me. back.